Good morning to you. How are you doing today? <clears throat> because I haven't really talked yet today, so my voice is a little raspy. I was over at, uh, you know, I'll just say it, I was over, I usually don't name um, places that I get stuff from. A, I don't get anything out of it, and B, all they get is free advertising. And, and if for some reason they don't like it, they get all grumpy, you know, so you figure it out. But uh, I'm just going to name this. I was over at Harbor Freight the other day. I had a little project, and uh, I bought this. This is just 3 8 um, air hose. Uh, this, is, this is kind of another story. Anyway, when I was over there, they had a lot of customers in there, my goodness. And uh, they only had two checkers that day, and and people were returning things, and just it was just a mess. And I really didn't want to go back, so I toughed it out. It was a pretty long line, and uh, this story actually gets better. So hang in there. And the uh, um, reason I'm without my tripod today, it's over at my mom's house. That's kind of letting the cat out of the bag, but that's okay. You'll figure you'll figure that out later if you uh, come back. Check the uh, next few videos I'm doing here. Anyway, um, <clears throat> when I was there, there were, uh, uh, it, you know, you always try and do something to pass the time when you're in line. You play with your phone and look at the other customers. And uh, we were, we were kind of chit-chatting there. And the gentleman in front of me had a... Uh, some stuff. It looked like he was going to work on his... He bought some supplies to work on his car. One of them was a little... I believe it was a vacuum. or it, No, it wasn't. It was a uh, compression tester to test the compression on a, in the engine. I'm just going to say his car engine. And he also had a little... one of those little lighted probes with... you know, it's a, it looks like a screwdriver handle but there's a light inside it. I've actually got one of those and it's it's floating around the shop somewhere. And some other miscellaneous stuff. He had a drill and some other stuff. And the reason I'm telling you this is because uh, when he, when the when the cashier rang up the probe and the compression tester gauge, the person made a a, a point. The cashier made a point of telling the customer that those that there was a restocking fee on those. And I'm kind of raising my eyebrow going, why would there be a restocking fee? So basically he told him in a nutshell, this is what I got out of it. Um, you buy this, let's just say that this has a restocking fee. And then you don't like it and bring it back. They're going to charge you some percentage, which I later looked up, which is 20%, according to the information I saw online. Um, if that's incorrect, feel free to correct me. Um, to just to bring an item back even though you may not have used it or you know you took it out of the package and went uh, I don't like this. I thought that was kind of weird and I got to thinking I was there about a week or two ago and the same thing happened to another customer and I was trying really hard to remember what it was Let me stop you here while I think of what it was. I had it a minute ago, but damn it, I can't remember it. Hang on. I remembered it. I just walked away and came. I mean, I was gone like a, a second here. Uh, it was two, uh, I don't know, it was two gentlemen. I was going to say what their ethnicity is, but, you know, it really doesn't matter. And uh, they had a... Uh, one of those big uh, plumbers, powered plumber snakes, you know, with the, with the big motor and the foot feet and all that. And the cashier told them that it wasn't, um, they couldn't just bring it back. It had to be, there had to be something wrong with it. They couldn't just, re they could return it, but it was a restocking fee. And of course they were trying to, the only reason I mentioned that they were from out of town was because they were having a hard time understanding what she meant. I assume that... Uh, they didn't normally. I don't. I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm trying to say. They were. They weren't good English speakers, which there's nothing wrong with that. 
It's just that they didn't understand, I guess is my point. So there was a lot of chit chat between the two of them trying to figure out what they were going to do or to try and explain it. I think one of them was interpreting for the other. Maybe that's what was going on. I don't know. It was interesting. And uh, they, they, there was a restocking fee on that. And I, you know, I got to thinking about it. And I, the only time I remember Harbor Freight ever having a restocking fee that I remember was on generators. And I can kind of see that a little bit. You know, I think what the deal is, is when people have power outages, they run down there, they buy a generator and run it for a, a day and then hurry up and try and return it, which is kind of a spoozball thing. I, I guess I don't think, I don't have enough time to sit and think these kind of, I guess I perceive them as kind of slimy things up. But apparently more and more of this must be happening and that's why they're apparently cracking down on this stuff. I'm a little disappointed. Um, I'm disappointed in a couple ways. I'm disappointed in Harbor Freight a little bit, but if they, if it's a problem, then they got to do something about it. And I'm very disappointed in people doing this because you're screwing it up for the rest of us. You know, there are plenty of the rest of people that buy something and get it home and decide it isn't for them or it isn't going to do what they're going to do or maybe they just don't like it. There are plenty of you know items in stores that you can't take out of the packaging, and uh, you know until you get it home and I've even asked you know like well you ask some questions you're kinda like eh you know I had that happen the other day I went to a, a a big box warehouse store and they had an item which it looked like at first it looked like a pretty good deal the more I looked at it I asked the clerk there I got a hold of a clerk or a warehouse person or whatever you want to call it and I asked her I said can you we remove one of these from the packaging and she pretty much in a nutshell said no you have to buy it I'm like well okay I'll give it a miss so I came home and did some online research and uh, decided it wasn't for me I'm glad I researched it I was was going to be pretty disappointed sound like this product had a pretty bad track record so I'm a little disappointed in the restocking fee and I'm disappointed in uh, people pulling that stuff. Um, I used to really like to go, go, I call it the crummy tool store just because it isn't that the tools are badly made, they're just, they don't have a lot of fit, a good fit and finish. And that's how all countries start out. You know, people are making fun of, and I do this too, I'm guilty of this. I, I make, I poke fun at uh, the major supplier of those tools, which is right at this point in time is China. And, uh, I remember when I when I was a kid, stuff from Japan was horrible, but they their manufacturing got better and better and better, and now they're a a, a world leader in manufacturing. Maybe we should take a hint, and eventually they'll uh, they'll get to the point where they're too good to build things, and things will be farmed out, and it's already kind of happening. And I remember that moving around in Asia when I was a kid. I mean, it used to be. Japan and then it was kind of what Singapore and Taiwan and you know now it's China and don't worry uh, uh, my, my, opinion, my opinion is that uh, eventually they'll get they'll get theirs it'll move to the next uh, big manufacturing place somebody will I personally believe it'll be Africa um, if they if those if they get their uh, um, they seem to have a lot of squabbles down there if they if they stop squabbling and start building things for a living then all that stuff will move away from China because it'll be cheaper wherever it's cheapest is where it goes if they had you know if they made cheap crappy tools on Mars then Mars you know made in Mars <laughs> would be the loco of the day so it's kinda interesting I don't know just I'm a little disappointed in that and uh, it's uh, it's interesting. I've I, as much as I kind of poke fun at that, I have shopped there for a long time. Um, I know a lot of people just really hate them and despise their products, and that's fine. Uh, I buy a lot of the stuff there under the guise I'm gonna probably I'm gonna chop this up to make something, and uh, basically I use it as a as a kind of a warehouse to supply me with raw materials for things. Um, since we can't seem to, you know, get anything in this country without it coming from those countries, you might as well buy it where it's damn cheap. And I need to build something out of this hose, so that's fine. And it was cheaper to buy, um, I think this is 25 feet of hose 
in this size than it was to go over to the hardware store and buy 25 foot of hose in like vinyl or whatever. It's just, it's just stupid. It's mass production. So that's my uh, comment on the restocking fee. And I don't know, I, I kind of read online that this applies to everything. I've read online that it doesn't apply to everything. I've read online that it applies to only certain things. And at the time, the cashier um, mentioned only a couple things. They seem to be automotive things. And I think it's things that people are buying in return and using them as a, a parts depot. You know, if, if Harbor Freight was smart, they'd rent that stuff out and <laughs> just throw it away. <laughs> Okie dokie. Well, take her easy. Have a good day.